Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Paris, Vice President of Sales Research at SXM Media. And I may not be Gen Z myself, but I am an older millennial who's done a lot of research on this generation over the years. And I'm also chronically online, so I feel very well versed in all things Gen Z. And I'm Salma Ali, Manager of Research at Edison Research. And I'm very excited to be the first Gen Z at Edison Research to be presenting a webinar. This is my first time presenting, so Twitter world, please be nice. Melissa and I have worked together on many projects, and I'm eager to present the first ever Gen Z podcast listener report from SXM Media and Edison Research. We have a lot of interesting data to present, but before we get into the details, let's see who Gen Z is, my generation. Our generation, I feel like, I feel very hopeful about like our generation. I feel like things like in our world will actually change for the better. We like think differently than the older generations. Like I feel like me and my brother clash a lot because my generation is like, um, like I want to be the boss. I want to do what I want to do. Like we love everybody, but his generation's more like work hard, wake up at five a.m., get this done, get that done. But you know, overall, I feel like we just want to get along with everybody. I feel like the older generations. I feel like they're they're not necessarily stuck, but they've been like. It's been passed down and passed down like the same thing over and over again until like our generation. And I feel like our generation wants to like stop and like make the change to something. And it's like, we've been hit with a lot of like uh, uh, world changing events. And I think that we've had to like adapt to that and learn how to cope. And not only that, but we're also, you know, in the middle of becoming adults um, in our twenties. So it's also even like a more important part of our lives. We're a bit too public. Uh, we like to share everything, which sometimes is a good thing, sometimes not really. I feel like a lot of people nowadays, are just like, especially with all the new technology out, out and things like that, they're kind of getting, in my opinion, lazy. I would say they're interesting. I would say that they have a lot to learn, including me. My generation, we have this incredibly strong and fervent um, desire to separate ourselves from the previous generation and just be different. We want to do things the healthy way. And, you know, we want to change up the parenting style. We want to change up uh, how we treat each other, how we live our lives, mental health, how we go about that. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think we have, we have great intentions on actually being, um, or in our eyes, and to our standards, good. So this report will highlight six important themes from our research. First, we're going to learn exactly how many U.S. Gen Zers have listened to a podcast in the past month and how big of an opportunity that represents. We'll share an overview of Gen Z listening behaviors and specifically how this generation is incredibly engaged with podcasts and love a good binge listen. It's no surprise that social media is ubiquitous among Gen Z, but here we're going to talk about how these platforms are a gateway to podcasts for many Gen Z listeners. We'll get into Gen Z and their viewpoints of current events and social issues and how Gen Z turn to podcasts to stay up to date and how they use podcasts to dive deeper into issues. Something that I'm really proud of with this generation is our priority to mental health and well-being. We try our hardest to create boundaries in every aspect of our lives, doesn't always work out, but we're out here trying. One way that we try is by using podcasts to aid us in our mental health journey. I know I listen to podcasts for this reason. And finally, we'll talk about how podcast ads influence this young generation. We actually have a great representation of this when we get to that section, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And we do have so much to share with you all today, so please feel free to ask questions along the way in the Q&A box. We will have people standing by to help. And we encourage everyone that's watching this live to interact with each other. You can do that by using the Zoom chat feature. But if you're watching the replay of this report, please email info at edisonresearch.com with your questions. And after this presentation, we will have the full report available to download at edisonresearch.com as well. Let's start by reviewing the study methodology. For the purpose of this study, we are considering Gen Z to be anyone between the ages of 13 to 24. In April of 2023, we learned about respondents ages 13 to 24 in one of three ways. We conducted 1,003 online interviews, 12 in-depth remote video interviews, and two in-person interviews at the homes of participants. 
all survey participants reported listening to a podcast in the last month, and the data was weighted to population statistics from the census and the 2023 Infinite report from Edison Research, Amazon Music, Wondery, and Art19. The growth of podcasts is this study's first highlight. For the next few slides, we're going to compare data in 2023 to data in 2018. And something that I want to make really clear is that data in 2018 represents those who were 13 to 24 in 2018. So they're not necessarily Gen Z. Podcasts have really grown in the past five years for this age group. Looking at share of ear for all spoken word audio content that ages 13 to 24 listen to, 58% of that time spent in 2023 is now with podcast. This is more than double the share of time that podcasts had compared to other spoken word content among ages 13 to 24 back in 2018. Not only has share grown, but reach as well. According to the Infinite Dial from Edison Research and Partners, back in 2018, 53% of U.S. age 13 to 24 had ever listened to a podcast. Today, over 77% of U.S. Americans age 13 to 24 have listened to podcasts. This is a 45% increase since 2018. When looking at monthly podcast listening among those aged 13 to 24, 30% were monthly podcast listeners in 2018, and that has increased 57% since then, with 47% of the U.S. population aged 13 to 24 being current monthly podcast listeners. Podcasts have seen great growth over the last five years across all demographics. We've seen this in our Latino podcast listener report, Black podcast listener report, the Women podcast listener report, and even in the Boomer report. Podcasts are just super up everywhere. So Melissa, tell me exactly how many of the U.S. Gen Z are monthly podcast listeners. So let's just pause on that last stat for a second. 47% of Gen Z in the U.S. are now monthly podcast listeners. And that represents an estimated 24 million Gen Z in the U.S., which is really quite an impressive number. So let's learn more about these estimated 24 million Gen Z monthly podcast listeners, and we'll dive in a bit more into who they are. Although we collected some demographic information among this age group, we can't go into great detail with education, income, or kids in the households because let's be real, we're mostly still in school, have $10 in the bank account, and just barely became adults. But what we do have is gender and ethnicity. And as you can see here, in 2018, those aged 13 to 24, 58% of those monthly podcast listeners were male and 42% were women. Now in 2023, we see that more women are listening to podcasts. This tracks well because we've seen this exact trend in our other podcast reports that we've done here at Edison. More podcast listeners are female. And census data shows us that Gen Z is more diverse than every generation that came before them. And that diversity carries through to Gen Z podcast listeners as well. We find that 20% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners identify as Hispanic or Latino, compared to just 15% of total U.S. monthly podcast listeners ages 13 and older. We see that 15% identify as Black or African American, which is on par with total listeners. And 4% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners identify as Asian, compared to just 3% of total monthly listeners. So now that we've sized up the population of Gen Z monthly listeners, and we've dug in a bit on who they are demographically, let's start to dive into more on how they consume podcasts. So to set the stage for how engaged they are with podcasts, let's hear more from the Gen Zers themselves about how podcasts fit in their daily lives and how they compare to other media. I would say a podcast is a lot more laid back. There's a lot less going on and it, just, it helps you really just focus on what's being said, I would say. So with podcasts, I feel like I could just sit down and like actually listen to something and like, you know, not having like a bright screen in my face, you know. Um, so switching to the podcast was actually very different. And I didn't think I was going to like it at first because you don't get the visual aspect of it. You're not seeing all these crazy things. And it's not like some short form video. It's a long audio. Um, so I thought that I wouldn't really like it as much, but I ended up finding it very entertaining it but they're it's very different from its videos did big transition it's more intimate and it's more specific and it goes deeper than why like most pieces of like five second ten second media are you know like i could like treat it more of a like a background thing 
like as if I'm watching a movie, it's gonna have to have like my full attention or like uh, playing a game, I'm gonna have to have my full attention, like focused on it. So podcast is in your ear, you're getting the information and you can, you know, do whatever else you wanna do. I like podcasts because you can do it something else while you are listening. Well, I feel like with podcasts, I'm more likely to be multitasking. So I'm more likely to be listening to a podcast in my car or listening to a podcast through my, my um, I have an Echo Dot. So I feel like it's more like, like raw material, I'd say, in a podcast, which makes it more interesting to me. 75% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have listened to a podcast in the last week. Among this total sample, 80% of those aged 13 to 17 have listened in the last week, and 73% of those aged 18 to 24 have listened in the last week. And if we like this stat among those aged 13 to 17, just give me one second, because looking at when Gen Z first started listening to podcasts, among those who first started listening to or watching podcasts, 16% of them started listening as a child. 57% started listening as a teenager, and 25% started listening as an adult. This is particularly exciting to see engaged listeners start at an early age. Think about it. 73% started listening before the age of 18. The opportunity to start them off early is huge. Actually, here at Edison Research, we're working on another exciting study that will focus on these kids and their podcast habits. Look for the announcement, but back to Gen Z. And what happens when someone starts young with podcasts? Well, this next question indicates that they could be even more engaged with those who started later in life. We asked, how much time did you spend listening to podcasts in the last week? Those that started as a child spend way more time with podcasts. In fact, 32% of them listen to podcasts for 10 hours or more. They spend an average of 10.6 hours listening per week compared to the total average of 7.7 .7 hours. This slide portrays how Gen Z monthly listeners first discovered podcasts, and this looks across the total sample. So the top way that listeners ages 13 to 24 first found out about podcasting is by seeing it on social media at 25%. Another 19% say they first heard about podcasts from the social media influencer or personality that they follow. And 16% said they first heard about podcasts by listening with their friends and family. So clearly social media plays a big role here as an initial gateway to the medium. Since we just saw the total for how Gen Z first discovered podcasts, we decided to look at this by when they first started listening. I'll be honest, there isn't a huge difference among these ages, but I would like to point out one major difference. Those that started listening as a child, 30%, said they first discovered podcasts by listening with friends and family, which is safe to say is mostly co-listening, and that's been a hot topic in the podcast world recently. I know my brother and I enjoy co-listening when I start cooking. Teenagers and adults have the exact same order for how they first discovered podcasts. They saw it on social media, from social media influencers and personalities, and also from recommendations from family and friends. But that child stat, that's the moneymaker from this slide. So now that we've covered data on when Gen Z first started listening to podcasts and on how they discovered the medium, let's dive more into how they're currently listening. A few slides ago, we showed that three in four Gen Z monthly listeners have listened to a podcast in the past week. Now let's talk about those who listen even more frequently. 28% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners say they listen to podcasts nearly every single day. Over two in three, or 68%, frequently listen to podcasts through headphones. So whether they're walking around with earbuds in or listening through those wired headphones with cords that somehow became cool again, podcasts are literally right in their ears. And just to size up the heaviest of listeners, over one in five or 21% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners listen to podcasts for more than 10 hours a week. There are many different ways that they can spend their time. And it's great to see that so many are choosing to spend so much of that time listening to podcasts. This stat is really cool. 83% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners ever recommend podcasts to their friends or family. 69% of them listen to podcasts while walking around or on foot, which means everyone is getting in their hot girl walk. And yes, hot girl walk is a TikTok phrase and applicable to everyone. It's more of a way of life and I'm fully participating in it. 
And Selma, I have to just interject for a sec. This is also very applicable to millennials. I myself love a hot girl walk with the podcast. It's for everyone. It really is. It is. And lastly, Gen Z monthly podcast listeners listen to an average of 6.8 different podcast topics. Podcasting may have started out as an audio-only medium, but over time, many podcasts have opted to make both audio and video versions of their shows available. And many Gen Z like having an option to either listen to or watch their favorite shows. 84% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have ever listened to a podcast with a video component. 71% ever consume podcasts with video that they actively watch while they're listening. And among those who do actively watch while listening, 49% say that the video gives them a better understanding of context and tone through things like facial expressions and gestures. And just under half, or 45%, say they actually feel more connected to the podcaster through video podcasts. So let's pause now to hear more about the appeal of video podcasts directly from Gen Z. Um, A lot of them are... uh video but i don't mind just listening to because like i said i'm like at work or on my commute so i'm literally just like listening to it even though there is an option for me to put it on a screen but it's the same thing for me i honestly i prefer listening to it because that's like the thing with podcasts it's like you can just listen you don't need to be watching or anything you could be doing other things while you're doing it but it's annoying when I'm watching a podcast and they they talk about something they're showing. And a lot of times it's relevant. So I've seen it before. So it's like a very popular video they're talking about. But sometimes it's something I've never seen. And I'm driving and they're like, look at this crazy video. of This guy, he won the race and I want to see it. And I can't because I'm driving, you know. So that's that's the annoying thing about only listening and not seeing. Yeah, I usually watch them. I usually like, uh, I don't like just do audio listening i usually like watch it with a video if, if it's audio i can't really tell what kind of expression the other person has when they're just listening um you get to see uh people's facial expressions their reactions to certain questions how they really feel about a topic and i kind of just like seeing people's facial expressions it mm-hmm. kind of cracks me up honestly especially if they're talking about like strange topics um so really for me it's just entertainment just kind of funny Another interesting finding from Gen Z monthly podcast listeners is that 78% of them often binge listen. 88% of those who started listening to podcasts as a child often binge listen. So again, the earlier these kids start listening to podcasts and create these habits, the more they consume. Those that often binge listen, listen to comedy, entertainment, celebrity, and gossip, and also true crime. And to no surprise, we'll see in the next slide Those are also the top three topics for Gen Z monthly podcast listeners. But what other topics are they listening to? So again, to reiterate, we do see comedy, entertainment, and celebrity, and true crime taking the top three spots among Gen Z listeners. That's not too surprising because we do see comedy dominating in virtually every demographic we've covered in past reports. But following that top three, we see that Gen Z also listen to podcasts about music, about games and hobbies, and about pop culture. That games and hobbies ranking in particular really interested me, and it stands out from other demographics that we've studied. And now, Salma mentioned before, Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have an average of about seven different topics or genres that they listen to. So variety is very much in their daily rotation as well. Now, thinking about the type of podcast content that's most appealing to them, Gen Z listeners prioritize authenticity, and they're interested in podcasts that tell real-life stories. They're also interested in individual episodes, so ones that are kind of standalone and discuss different topics each time. They're also drawn to shows that have back and forth conversation and banter, as well as shows that feature interviews with different guests. And of course, given how popular binge listening is with Gen Z, they want more podcasts they can easily binge listen. My generation doesn't know a life without the internet. I don't think I can survive if I'm being honest. And with the internet came social media and social media definitely has its ups and downs. Let's learn about how Gen Z monthly podcast listeners use social media. Right off the bat, we see a crazy number for them. 99% of all Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have ever used at least one social media platform. That's such a high number. 84% engage with podcasts through social media and 24% choose to listen to their very first podcast because it was hosted by someone they liked. Lastly, 
44% consider themselves content creators, and that number does not surprise me at all. Actually, when we looked at the data, among those 44% monthly podcast listeners that consider themselves content creators, 11% self-identified as a podcast creator. We've already covered the fact that social media plays a key role in how Gen Z first discover podcasts, but social's influence doesn't stop there. So when it comes to ongoing discovery in terms of finding out about new shows to listen to, social media is crucial here as well. Three in four Gen Z monthly listeners find out about shows from brief podcast clips on social media or from social media posts, and over seven in 10 find out about shows through recommendations from YouTube specifically. So those top three discovery methods are all related to social media, and that's for total 13 to 24 listeners. And just note here that friends and family comes in fourth place in this view at 70%. Now, social media's dominance for podcast discovery is a bit more pronounced here than what we've seen in some other listener studies. So in the women's podcast report, for example, we saw recommendations from friends and family come out far ahead. But what's interesting here is that the story shifts a bit when we look at it by age group within Gen Z. 85% of younger listeners aged 13 to 17 find out about podcasts from their friends and family. That's even higher than social media for this group, and it's significantly higher than the percentage of 18 to 24ers who hear about podcasts from their friends and family. And 45% of listeners ages 13 to 17 said they find out about podcasts through school. And again, that's much higher than older Gen Z listeners. Now, outside of those two sources, there isn't as much of a difference by age. So again, the key finding here is that for children and teenagers, friends and family and school really are uniquely important in their podcast discovery journey. We've talked about how monthly Gen Z podcast listeners find out about podcasts, but where do they find them? At no surprise, YouTube is number one. We've seen this in our other podcast listener reports, but you know what, Melissa? You should be proud that it took me 29 slides to really talk about TikTok because you know how much I love TikTok, and so does this generation. So let's hear what they have to say about the platform. TikTok. 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 You'll sit there and you'll scroll for hours if you let yourself spending way too much time on it. But I'll have to admit it was very entertaining. Very unique videos. A lot of creative people uh, on this app. Uh, Just with like the different ideas for videos, stuff like that. My sister and I or people online, I see refer to as TikTok University because we all, it's always said that, you know, the things that we learn on TikTok we've never learned in school. On TikTok, there are... um, there's clips where they post clips of their podcast snippets of it. That's all. That's how I found most of my podcasts. Usually they post like a 30 second or a minute clip of a funny moment or something like that. And right now, somehow my TikTok is full of podcasts. But I would say now I find a lot of them on, on TikTok first. A preview of their podcast, of them talking about stuff. And they'll be like, this is the link to my my podcast, like in my bio or something. And pretty much it'll take you like Spotify or, or YouTube or whatever. And you can listen to their podcast on there. I mean, on YouTube shorts, it will give me like podcasts that I wouldn't really want to watch. But on TikTok, it, it shows me like podcasts that I would like want to watch. So, Platforms like TikTok clearly play an important role in podcast discovery for Gen Z. But what I loved seeing in these results is that exposure to short clips on social media drives deeper podcast consumption elsewhere. So just about 9 in 10 Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have ever watched a brief podcast clip on a social media platform like TikTok or Instagram. And that piques their curiosity so much that it actually drives them off platform to find the full story. So among those 9 in 10 who have watched a brief podcast clip on social media, 73% say that they went on to listen to or watch the full podcast somewhere else. Now, this habit of catching a clip of something on social media, then seeking a deeper dive elsewhere, is not unique to podcasts. It turns out we actually saw a similar phenomenon for news as well. So again, among Gen Z monthly podcast listeners, 57% say that they first hear about current events through social media platforms. But ironically, only 17% say that they trust the information that they read on social media. And we just found it fascinating that Gen Z spends so much time with these social platforms, And they acknowledge that they're key for breaking and unearthing these stories, yet they also realize that they can't fully trust what they see there. And this feels like the perfect segue into how podcasts play such a vital role for Gen Z listeners, again, when it comes to these things like current events and social issues. So podcasts can give them both the deeper dive 
and the diverse perspectives and opinions that they're seeking on these issues that can be really nuanced. And again, it's things that they aren't really finding elsewhere. When we ask Gen Z monthly podcast listeners, what are some of the top reasons for listening or watching podcasts? 84% said it was to dig deeper into topics they were interested in. 74% because they want to hear unique perspectives on topics not covered in other media. And 66% said because they wanted to stay up to date with the latest topics. 61% said to keep you up to date with social issues. Speaking of social issues, we have another in-depth interview coming right up. I see snippets of podcasts about stuff that I don't really agree with but it helps me understand other people's points of view. I learned about new cultures, how they um, how they differ from like what I'm used to, or, you know, they have certain things they they always do that I'm not always, uh, that I, I would never think of. They've uh, like influenced how I look at certain um, things of the world, like how our society is. Sometimes they have like helped me look at the world differently, I guess like from a different perspective. I would say that I have changed like my view about like many topics. So it's definitely increased my empathy, um, I feel, and my open-mindedness. Because I don't really have much American friends per se. I have friends here, but they're more international. So um, I'm able to just, you know, like listen to different perspectives just to understand the culture. It really just helps me learn new things and it helps me uh, grow. Like, I feel like I... I get different perspectives that I wouldn't often get. We asked Gen Z monthly podcast listeners which issues specifically are important to them. And it's no surprise that social justice is at the top, with 60% saying it's important to them. This is followed by the economy at 60%, gun laws at 58%, the effects of social media on their mental health at 54%, and reproductive rights at 53%. Now, while it is lower on the list in terms of ranking order, LGBTQIA plus rights are also very important to this generation, and that shouldn't be surprising given how strongly Gen Z identify as members or allies of this community. According to the 2021 Gallup report, 7% of all Americans ages 13 or older identify as either gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. When we asked about this in our Gen Z podcast study, 17% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners identified this way. And even if they don't identify as being part of the LGBTQIA plus community themselves, the majority of Gen Zers know someone who does. 58% of monthly listeners say they have friends or family members who are part of the community. And this leads me to believe that this generation is more likely to be allies and more likely to support brands who align with their views. Remember when I told you that with social media comes the good and the bad? Well... One in three Gen Z monthly podcast listeners think that being on social media has had a negative impact on their emotional well-being. Personally, I've gone back and forth with deleting apps and then going back on them. But as I said earlier, one medium where I think helps my mental health are podcasts. And these monthly Gen Zers can agree. A podcast or maybe an audiobook or something where someone is speaking on a subject, I think that can definitely change somebody's mental health completely for the better if i'm worried about a test or something uh, the next week podcast kind of like help me forget about that i'd say uh, forget about the stress and just like relax there are 100 percent youtube videos podcasts tiktok channels all those things specifically made for people to feel better so it's definitely a place you could go for something like that music Um, And like podcasts, I feel like that's where I learn, that's where I grow, that's where I feel like more safe, comfortable. I listen to podcasts almost all day and they, I think it kind of like clears my mind. I don't know. It brings me happiness. And to me, that's the best form of media. 83% of Gen Z listeners say they turn to podcasts to relax and 65% say they listen to escape. Sometimes podcasts can even help them regulate their own emotions, with over half saying they listen to help them understand how they're feeling about something. And while we heard in some of the earlier interview footage that many Gen Z do multitask while listening to podcasts, we saw in the study that 82% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners say they ever listen to podcasts while just listening or doing nothing else. Podcasts are an important way for Gen Z to unwind and just focus on the content that they're listening to. 
And while any of the content they choose to listen to can help them relax and escape, regardless of the genre, we did see that podcasts that focus on wellness are having a bit of a moment with Gen Z. 30% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners listen to wellness and self-improvement podcasts. And we see that female Gen Z and LGBTQIA plus Gen Z over index for listening here. We have found time and time again in our listener studies that podcast ads really do break through and make an impact. And listeners are very receptive to hearing them. And this holds true for Gen Z listeners as well. Selma mentioned during the methodology review that in addition to all the virtual interviews that we've been showing you throughout the presentation, we also visited the home of Gen Z listeners to learn even more about how podcasts fit into their daily lives. And during one of those sessions, we saw the influence of podcast ads naturally come to life. So let's take a look now at how one Gen Z listener, Maria, listens to podcasts. My name is Maria and I live in Elizabeth, New Jersey. I love doing a plethora of things. I like running, I love doing yoga, I like doing triathlons, I like hiking, and I love cooking plant-based meals. I have a smartphone, obviously I have a Samsung, and there's a, a thing that I have because I'm a very heavy sleeper. So as soon as my alarm goes off, after three minutes, it starts playing my, my podcast. The podcasts that I listen to, they often those people, they start saying, oh, you know, I wake up my day with um, meditation or journaling. So then, you know, sometimes I just stop it, I pause it, and then I meditate, and then I do my journaling, and then I continue playing the playlist. I'm doing like something that I, busy work, something that I don't have to specifically uh, pay that much mind to. Like I, I can't do homework and listen to it. So I'm doing laundry and listening to it, or cleaning and listening to it, cooking, um, doing something that I could just, my mundane everyday stuff that I don't have to actually pay that much detail into. I, since I, I move around the house, sometimes I do put it up, but there's not much to really see because it's just two people talking to each other. Unless I really like somebody and I just, I love looking at their face and their expressions. It does say a lot, but I got used to kind of tell what their expression is based on their tone of voice. I started listening to self-help audiobooks and on YouTube and then I think it just started to say like, hey, you might like this. And then I clicked on one and then I found out Ritual, which is my favorite one. Yeah, so then uh, he says, hey, I'm gonna take a quick break. But before we, we continue starting, I would really like to tell you guys about a product, product that I've been using and how much it's been helpful for me. They, for example, drink this type of supplement drink. It's called AG1 Greens or it's a super greens drink. And so they said like, hey, I'm taking it. I've been a fan for six years. And so now they're sponsoring me, you should do it. So I, I kind of like that a lot. It, it taught me a lot uh, about a lot more. So now I drink it every day and I really like it, but it's because they said it. You know how they do www dot blah, 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 slash rich roll to get 10% off. I got the 10% off. The podcast that I listened to has definitely uplifted me in, in a lot of ways and then taught me different ways of how I can improve my mental health. So I'm a firm believer that, um, what you consume is who you are based on like food and, and, and media. So when they talk about things like, you know, I ran for five hours and then I check my phone and I'm like, oh, I've been on YouTube for five hours or Instagram. I'm like, damn, while I was doing nothing, somebody was doing something. So those types of things have been keeping me more mindful of how I use my phone. I love interviews. Um, they're just really interesting how you don't feel alone in a world full of uh, just a lot of things and so these people they're way better than i will ever be in certain aspects and i want to be like them and they still don't feel good enough so i'm like oh like this is so insane how you could see somebody that is so accomplished but you're not there and they don't even feel like they're there yet so that helps me a lot the way i see them better in themselves it helps me get better it may have looked like Athletic Greens is a sponsor of this webinar, but it wasn't. 82% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have taken any action as a result of hearing a podcast advertisement. We just saw an example of this. I love that big stat. So let's unpack that a little and dig into specific actions they've taken after hearing ads and podcasts. 70% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners have either purchased or wanted to purchase the product or service they heard advertised. And 61% have visited a brand or a product website. 44% have used a promo code or a discount code mentioned in the podcast. And 42% have recommended a product to a friend or family member. 
And given that podcasts are such a trusted source of information for Gen Z, it makes sense this is an environment where trust carries over into the ads as well. And we just saw a great example of a trusted recommendation come to life in that interview with Maria that we just saw. When it comes to different types of podcast ads they might hear, 84% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners often or occasionally find products or services that are discussed by the host to be useful. 80% find sponsorship messages to be useful. You know, the one where it goes, this program is brought to you by. And 76% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners find pre-recorded advertisements to be useful. Gen Z are exposed to countless ads on a daily basis throughout all different types of media they consume. We've covered the fact that Gen Z are open to hearing podcast ads and that they take action after hearing them. And we also learned that they find them to be more memorable than ads they hear and see elsewhere. 47% of Gen Z monthly podcast listeners say they are more likely to remember brands that they hear advertise on podcast. Brands have a real opportunity to make an impact on listeners by supporting their favorite creators and shows. We're almost at the finish line of this hearty presentation on Gen Z monthly podcast listeners, but we couldn't end this presentation without giving marketers and publishers some key takeaways and answering this one question. How do we get more Gen Z to listen and interact with podcasts? You do so by having good hosts, by providing good tips and advice and having unfiltered conversations that can't be heard elsewhere. You have to be authentic in your podcast. Gen Z more than anyone can sniff through that insincerity. If you think I'm being a little dramatic, which I might have a tendency to do so, but that's beside the point to see for yourself. I would say find a topic that you find interesting, something that's slightly niche. Um, so you don't really have to compete with a bunch of other people doing the same thing because just people do podcasts all the time and you can just easily start one on your own. And I think just, you know, be yourself. Definitely. Everybody says that, but you know, don't change for anything. Don't, don't put on a persona, just do whatever you want to do and make it your own thing. I would just recommend somebody be true to themselves and to their morals and their values. Maybe, maybe find different topics that people don't know about or people are really interested about and nobody's really talked about them. I would say to keep it fun and light, but to also make sure you don't overgeneralize, like don't, don't use like stereotypes, things like that, and try to be like broad in your perspective. Like don't focus in specifically on one, one type of culture or one niche. Talk about something unique, uh, bring someone on with like a different personality, a funny personality. I've seen people blow up on social media just because of their personality. You have to be a little funny. Um, but I also want something out of it. I want, uh, you know, either motivation or something educational. It would be nice if there was a podcast that talks about all that's happening. I guess relates to us and our confusion or our feeling of aloneness or um, loneliness. Okay, we know we've covered a lot of ground in this presentation. So let's start to bring it home with just a few implications for marketers first. Podcasts are increasingly important to Gen Z. They're growing in both number of listeners and in their daily share of year. Podcast listening is now a major media activity for younger listeners, and it should not be overlooked as a key way to reach them at scale. Podcasts play a multifaceted role for Gen Z listeners. They're turned to for everything from entertainment to relaxation and escapism, to self-care, to education. And there are many ways to engage with Gen Z through podcasts in a contextually relevant way that aligns with their motivations in the moment. Podcasts are a crucial way for Gen Z to get exposure to diverse perspectives and to keep up to date on social issues and important events. Controversial conversations are welcomed in this trusted space for Gen Z. So rather than being seen as a risk, this presents an opportunity for brands to show up authentically with this generation. And finally, Gen Z listeners are incredibly open to podcast advertising. About half are more likely to remember brands that are advertising podcasts compared to other media. And over eight in 10 have taken action after hearing podcast ads. Implications for creators and publishers, how to create podcasts that resonate with Gen Z. While the host of a podcast is important, an interesting topic or unique format can draw Gen Z listeners in. They are interested in a variety of styles and formats and are consuming all types of genres. Offer them some utility. Almost six in 10 think it's important that the podcasts that they listen to provide them with tips and advice. Social media is a key discovery point for Gen Z 
particularly those aged 18 to 24, both as an initial gateway to podcasts as a medium and as a source to finding new shows to listen to. A vast majority have heard a brief clip on social media and listened to the full podcast elsewhere. Sharing clips and promoting shows via social media is a must. Listeners who started consuming podcasts as children are the most engaged, spend more time listening each week, and are more likely to binge listen. Younger listeners present an opportunity to cultivate a devoted long-term fan. Thank you for joining us and a special thank you to Tamila Sutt and the SXM team for supporting this type of research. On the Edison team, thank you Megan and Nicole for guiding me through my first webinar, Kelly and Karina for editing these amazing qual videos, and Gina on the data team. And thank you all again for joining us. We will stick around and answer questions in the chat box for the next few minutes, or you can always reach out to info at edisonresearch.com if you do have any questions. And please visit SXM Media and Edison Research sites to see this and many other podcast reports. We're proud of the people behind this report, and we hope anyone watching this will share this data and support the growth of Gen Z listeners. Now, on to the Q&A.